In this video, we'll be taking a look at three MLB games happening on August 21st, 2022. Welcome back to Cash Out Sports. Let's dive right into it. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and to click the bell icon to get notified as soon as these videos get released so that you have more time to plan out your bets. As we provide these videos on a daily basis, I can guarantee that you'll have all the important information that you'll need on these three MLB games. After fully watching this video, one more thing before we start, if you would like to gain access to our best exclusive betting picks to take your sports betting journey to the next level, then check out our Patreon in the link down below where we offer anywhere from 1 betting pick a day up to 10 betting picks a day and much more. Now let's get started. Chicago White Sox vs. Cleveland Guardians The Chicago White Sox conclude their weekend series against the Cleveland Guardians with both teams fighting for first place in the American League Central Division. The White Sox have a 62-59 record but after winning the recent game 2-0 are only 2.5 games back of the Guardians who boast a 64-56 record and with 10 wins in the last 14 games, are in first place in the division. For the final game of the series, the White Sox will turn to Dylan Cease who has been the ace of the staff and has only allowed five runs in his last three starts while the Guardians will turn to Aaron Sibyl who has only allowed three runs in the last two starts as their starting pitcher. The Sox are 13-3 in their last 16 Sunday games and 7-2 in their last nine road games versus a team with a winning record. The under is 6-1-3 in their last 10 in game three of a series. Meanwhile, the Guardians are 6-1 in the last 7 in Game 3 of a series and 7-3 in their last 10 Sunday games. The Guardians have been playing significantly better in recent weeks, with an 18-12 second half record compared to the White Sox 16-13 record in that span. However, the White Sox are turning to their ace in their rotation and Dylan Cease who looks to end the series strong for the team. The White Sox should constantly drive in runs with Jose Abreu, Andrew Vaughn, and the rest of the lineup making contact and barreling the ball against Aaron Civil and the rest of the Guardians pitchers too easily play bass runners. The White Sox should also limit the Guardians lineup with Dylan Cease, who has only allowed five runs in his last three starts, pitching multiple scoreless innings to allow the bullpen to close out the game with the lead. We should have a solid pitching matchup in the finale. Cease has given up five earned runs in 17 innings over his last three starts, totaling 11 hits and 8 walks. As for Civil, he surrendered 3 earned over his last 11 innings on 8 hits and 1 walk. I like both starters to do well here in a close matchup, so the Chicago White Sox money line is our full game side pick. The Guardians should limit the White Sox lineup that is averaging only 4.22 runs per game with Aaron Civil building off 2 starts where he's only allowed 3 runs and pitching multiple strong innings. The White Sox should eliminate the Guardians lineup with Dylan Cease, who has only allowed 41 runs all season pitching multiple scoreless innings with little to no contact at the plate. This is another opportunity to back Cease, but there are some additional factors that make the under an even stronger bet than Chicago to win the game. Cease is dominant and is not going to allow more than one run in all likelihood. He is probably not going to get much run support either, though. The White Sox are missing three key players from their lineup due to injuries leaving them in a tough spot. Their offense ranks among the best in the majors, but that is not quite the case with those injuries. Civil has only allowed four runs in his last four starts, making the under look like an attractive wager. With both teams starting pitchers coming off great starts recently and the under covering in nine of the Guardians' last 13 games, the upcoming game looks to be a low-scoring one from the first pitch controlled by both starting pitchers. Under the projected total is our full game total pick. Toronto Blue Jays vs. New York Yankees On Sunday afternoon, the Toronto Blue Jays and New York Yankees meet in the final game of a four-game set at Yankee Stadium. The Blue Jays will start Alec Manna while the Yankees counter with left-hander Nestor Kortz. Toronto is 3-7 in their last 10 games against a left-handed starter and 4-1 in their last five Sunday games while the under is 4-1 in their last five games overall. New York is 39-17 in their last 56 home games and 1-4 in their last five games following a loss while the under is 6-1-1 to one to one in their last eight games following a loss. This American and League East showdown will finally come to an end on Sunday afternoon with the best pitching matchup of the series. Alec Mano will get the start for the Blue Jays and he will be opposed by Nestor Quartz of the Yankees. At this point in the season, both starters have seen the opposing American League East squad a few times. This will be Mano's fourth start against the Yankees this year and so far in his three starts, he has allowed five runs and 10 hits in 17.1 innings. He has held the Yankees to a .164 batting average in those three starts, but in his lone start at Yankee Stadium. 
he allowed just one hit in six innings. New York came into this series ready to break out of their offensive slump against the Blue Jays' weak pitching, but they've scored just four runs in the first three games. Ross Stripling, Jose Barrios, and Mitch White had been struggling in the last few weeks, yet they were all dominant against the Yankees. Following Saturday's 5-2 loss, the Yankees had scored 21 runs in their previous 11 games, including being shut out four times. Taking into account their miserable offense in August and facing Mano, who has thrived under the bright lights in the Bronx, it's hard to believe they'll have an offensive breakout on Sunday. Quartz has been the most reliable pitcher for the Yankees this season, but whether it's fatigue or opponents learning, he's been slightly less effective since the All-Star break. The Yankees are a disaster right now and there's really nothing that this team can do right at the moment. Nestor Quartz is a solid arm, but he's had issues in his last couple of starts and I just believe that this is a complete momentum spot for the Blue Jays. So the Toronto Blue Jays' money line is our full game side pick. The Blue Jays are in a battle for the final wild card spot and these matchups against divisional foes are critical. Unless the Yankees suffer a dramatic free fall, their chances at a playoff spot lie in the wild card route. Both starting pitchers in this matchup will certainly have the upper hand. Nestor Quartz has been amazing all year long and has been New York's most consistent arm this season besides Jared Cole. I can see him and Mano completely shutting down the opposing offense all afternoon long. Considering how good these guys are, I anticipate a 3-1 or 4-2 type of final score. Under the projected total is our full game total pick. New York Mets vs. Philadelphia Phillies National League East rivals will conclude a big four-game series on Sunday afternoon when the New York Mets visit the Philadelphia Phillies at Citizens Bank Park. The Mets lead the series 2-1 so far after the team split a Saturday doubleheader, with the Phillies winning the nightcap 4-1 as a plus-117 underdog. New York leads the division by three games at 78-44 while the Phillies hold a wild card spot at 66 to 54. This has been a one-sided season series with the Mets holding a 13 to 5 advantage thus far. Gibson has done pretty well in the stats columns lately. He's given up 6 earned in 20 total innings on 14 hits and 3 walks over his last 3 appearances. Gibson is 2 to 1 during that time with the only blemish being a tough luck loss to the Marlins on August 11th. The Mets have been put in a tough spot having to call up Butto for this fight, and I don't think he is going to find a whole lot of success here. The Phillies' offense is one of the best in baseball, and they will run up the score against Butto here. I like Gibson to keep it rolling here and put the Phillies in a good spot. It should be fun to see how Butto does in his debut, however. So the Philadelphia Phillies' money line is our full game side pick. The Mets are averaging 4.76 runs per game and 4.69 runs per game on the road. They averaged 4.67 runs per game in their last three games against the Phillies. With Philadelphia giving up four runs per game at home, the Mets will be held under their average in this game. The Phillies are averaging 4.60 runs per game and 4.73 runs per game at home. They averaged 0.67 runs per game in their last three games against the Mets. The Mets are right up there with baseball's best offenses, posting a 113 WRC plus that is the fifth best in the majors. They've gotten even better over the last month, as trade acquisitions Daniel Vogelbach and Tyler Naquin have added some much-needed depth. Gibson is starting to slow down in his mid-30s, posting a below-average 104 earned run average minus 104 Fahrenheit IP minus. The Mets and Phillies played over the total in four of their last seven meetings. With New York giving up 4.15 runs per game on the road, the Phillies will score enough runs to push the score past the total. Plus, with both teams sending out shaky pitchers at a hitter-friendly park, this one ends up being a high-scoring affair. Over the projected total is our full game total pick. That's all for now, so if you have any other games you would like reviewed, then leave a comment down below with the game you would like analyze. Subscribe to our channel, leave a like on this video, and we'll get to it as soon as we possibly can. We would also love to hear your opinion on the picks presented to you in this video, whether you agree or disagree with them, so leave a comment down below and do let us know.